Hey everyone and welcome. I'm Biffin and let's play some Firewatch. I'm so pumped. You've been waiting to play this for so long. So, for those of you who don't know, Firewatch is a first person mystery adventure game developed by Campo Santo that is now available on Steam and PlayStation 4 and that's pretty much all I can tell you really. They've done a very good job um, of keeping it a secret and what the mystery is. I've hidden away from as many spoilers as possible so that I can have the most authentic playthrough that I, that I can. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to it for quite some time now, so maybe the middle of last year when I first seen um, a video that the developers posted. And it looked cool. Um, it got a beautiful art style and generally I just love these kind of very narrative driven games so I'm really looking forward to this. So I have done a little test already so I have played like one or two minutes just to make sure there was some recording that the recording worked and everything. So let's get into it. Boom. Santo presents. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. We see Julia. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, us, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. Go on, Henry, lad. You're drunk, of course. So what's your, so what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You're a future hangover. What? Somebody should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. Nice. She flags down a waiter. And one week later, you and Julie, you are Julia's boyfriend. Nice. Well played, Henry. GG. I am playing on PC but with a pad. Okay. I guess we're going in the car. The truck. Yeah. We date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good, man. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. You adopt the Shepherd and name him Mayhem. Bucket. Bucket the beagle. That's what you want, eh? Let's be nice. Look, it's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. We love him too. Now, as far as I know, your, um, your choice is 
you know, dictate the gameplay. So we will get a total different playthrough. Well, not total different, but you'll get a different playthrough if you choose different options, different um, speech options. So, 1979. We talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9:30. The heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you have, if you and I have some kids, some, some, a couple of little idiots, then it sounds pretty good, man. In that case, you should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that, they're, that their parents are hitched. I think you're right, man. Kids need structure. Yeah, look at this. Oh, wow. I love the art style. They do a really good job. And the sound design. The music is beautiful. Fire danger. High. No, critical, is that? Critical, I guess. Okay. Let's have a look at the sun. No fair trailhead. No fireworks. Learn to live with bears. You're in there, couldn't you? Don't forget to check in. Two, four, two, no. Warning! Thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Bring it on. Oh, man, look at the tree moving, yes. So peaceful. So a year later, 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call, you're worried, and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. What have you been up to, Julia? You've been getting drunk. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets in between when she gets between the sheets. You get mad, you get you ignore her. That's the typical male thing and ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry. You ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pillow of resentment. Good job, buddy. You make some coffee and go to work. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from research for her research. From her research, sorry. She draws all the places you go, she draws you. Do I want do we want to pose flex like a He-Man or frolic like a Victoria's Secret model? Yeah, boy. <laughs> Julia was right. You're very pretty. Oh thanks, Julia. You're pretty too. They did a really good job of choosing a good colour palette, I think, for this. The tones work very well together. It's so beautiful. I really hope that um, when it renders out, it comes through as, as good as this. I mean, it won't, obviously, but man, this is so beautiful. It stands. It glows. They did a good job. Of, um, Using the music as well to capture that kind of to um, project the feeling that the game is telling you know, that relaxed kind of feeling the game is telling you achieve very atmospheric. Two forks, fire, knockout. Eight miles still to go. Don't walk into the post. Get over it, son. I 
1782. During the summer, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. Okay. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. What? One of them tries to mug you with a knife? Motherfucker. Bucket gets kicked. But the bear fight, the dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is dressed. You confront the attacker. Scare him away or do you beat his goddamn face in? You beat his goddamn face in, right? Fucking move me, motherfucker. <laughs> Your arms get caught up, get cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Come on, Henry. It's all about, man. Julia asks you to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Okay. Plans to have kids get way like uh, way late by work. The best laid plans of mice and men, my friend. Julia gets offered a job at the end. They live in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair, please. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. <laughs> hmm. Do we convince her not to take the job? Now that's a pretty dick move, though. Know? Agree she commutes back and forth. That's also a pretty dick move. Though. That's 2,000 miles. But you can't stand in the way. And you've got to do what you want to, so. Yep. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard. It will. But she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees, she flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. Okay. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important in the research. She didn't remember that she'd happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She's found crying in the stairwell. So do you suggest that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it? Or make macaroni and drink wine and forget about it? No, let's confront it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia, which is in four months. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Okay. Things are taking turn for the worse. In Henry's life, it seems. Okay. You can pick up the jail, have a look at this. <laughs> Henry, you naughty boy. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. Nineteen eighty-seven. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in her class. The research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. It has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Oh no. Shit, man. Some days you get Judy who calls a dope and your unborn children little idiots. The other day, you get a complete stranger here. Eh? You know, like, it's, it's a hard thing to mention for everyone, you know? For the people that it affects, they don't really know, but for the family, it's pretty tough. 
She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit him. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. It's just a slippery slope. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two. Weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with 24 hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months and big decisions. You decide to move her into a full time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. I'm guessing he's a pretty stubborn man and wants to do it himself. Right? What do you think? I think so. Some nice birch trees that you can drop model in there. It's cool. Yeah, game so pretty. Look at you. Hey, friend. Another little touches of like the butterflies flying around. See this? Oh, cool. That's cool. <laughs> the way they modeled that jump, that's cool. It's impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. So. When she goes to sleep, you stay awake for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching the baseball in the summer college, watching baseball in the summer and college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. Okay. Turn into the drink boy. You start going out after you've put it to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about it getting up and walking around while you're gone. Put a chair in front of the bedroom door. I think you've got to trust that she sleeps like a rock. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple of nights a week. We look forward to those nights. One night you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint, you blow a 10, a point 10, and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell Susan, your sister, you tell your sister-in-law Susan. Okay, then. It's life's just spiraling out of control. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia's coming to live with them. You don't argue, you'll say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Okay. Oh, that's tough. Poor Henry. Okay, let's have a look outside. I kind of just want to go exploring. It's so beautiful here. Okay, then let's go and have a look. On our new job.
So cool. It's be a pretty lonely job. Being here on your own. Let's have a look at the view first though. So we can see anything. Have a look. For a fair look out. Some gas. Ain't nothing that way. It'd be a cool job though, like getting to spend all your time out here in this forest. In Yellowstone, I believe this is. Did I go past the boat? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Okay, let's have a look. Put the power on. Hello, woman on the end of the phone. Eh, uh, more than talking. Release left trigger to talk to the line. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <laughs> People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Let me shoot. That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. <laughs> Fine. Then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. What do you think is wrong with one? You've killed three ex-husbands. You rebelling against mum. Nobody back home can stand you. Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. <laughs> Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch! Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Yeah, well, I do. better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay, Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Okay, day one. Sorry. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Are you spying on me, Delilah? Okay. Let's look at the radio. Uh, have a quick look around. We've got coffee percolator, cast iron pan, cookbook, fish show. Well, you can pick up everything. Space puffs. Ooh. A singular mind. Death strikes of two. The Patriots. Birds of Wyoming. Boy. Okay, well, I feel like here's a good place to put in a cup before we start the next day properly. So there'll be a new episode out tomorrow. And if you like this, you know what to do. It's YouTube. It's not rocket science. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.